Show you some of the things I think are like the most dope stuff that we have for sale right now. So let's check it out. Let's go. You can't miss the wall. Everything on the wall is heated as well. Yeah, the photo crazy. Right. Hologram logo. We got North Faces the whole way up top. Box logo hoodies. Uh, that can't miss up right there. We get in sneakers. Mm -hmm. New retro. Focus came out in 01. So for the first time in 17 years, these are brand new again. Pretty juice on that. They could be a little nicer, but they're back. I'll rock them. I'm, I'm yeah, stoked on it. Like those Clean colorway. Very stoked. Nice little colorway. Ten wall. What else we got? Supreme 98. Can't go wrong. Yeah, those are hard. A little bit of OG flavor. Mm -hmm. Some bread ones. Some band ones. These shits are sick. The Skepta, the Skepta Air Max collab. Skepta's always fresh. So like, if Skepta does it, it should usually be a fair rule of thumb that it's a good choice. These are cool. Ohio stamp. The What If LeBron samples. LeBron 5? Uh, is that the 5? Yeah, it's a, it's a crazy one. The 1M one samples. These are sick too. Yeah, I like those. The Campbell's, the Vans half calves. Little Supreme collaboration. Yeah, that's hard. With the, the stamp. It's a good pair. Um, honestly, like, I have to have like these. What are you looking at? The cones? Yeah, the, the cones are crazy. Um, This is a different one, man. Like. Summer 2018 right there, Cone Air Max 98. This shoe? This is the reason we're having this conversation, Concords. If it weren't for Concords, I wouldn't ever got into all this stuff, so gotta pay homage to these guys. 45 on the back. 325, come get you a pair. What else you guys seeing, man? We got a lot of so, stuff right now. I know for me, I'm a, I'm a big one fan, so when yeah. these came out right here, the split toes? Yeah, the split toes. The, splits the split are cool, toes man. are definitely like no, they're one hard. of my favorites right there. Actually, too, I think low key, the leather quality, that's like the nicest leather on a GR Jordan 1 this year. Yeah. Those yeah, are, yeah. They're buttery. So, me, yeah, I'm a big, super, like, super big Jordan 1. Yeezy, I like a couple of the Yeezys. Yeah, I like the Nike Yeezys. That's kind of where I'm at with it. Big off white. Yeah? Love off white. I yeah. think, that, I think uh, Virgil was very clever with what he did with no, the he, tags, all everything, as far as the shoe. He's super creative, man. Yeah, dumb creative. It, uh, it, you know, it's very, it's very cool to see like his clothing brand and then his collaboration with Nike, how it all kind of plays. Yeah, it spiraled out. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, yeah. it's sick. Oh, no, that, that was dope. We forgot to mention these. Oh yeah, definitely these. Big homage. The reason why we're here. Yeah, right here, definitely. <laughs> Wanted to talk some of this. Yeah, man. The Air Max 197. Yeah. yeah, we're stoked, man. That's going down in history. That's a classic right the there. The Wave, Valor, VA to LA. Uh huh. Every it's all about and the details, the people. Yeah, the 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 Valor liner is just like stupid. Yeah, all that. Yeah. Yeah, it's Gotta like wearing like a it's like wearing like an air mattress around your feet. You know what I'm <laughs> Shouts out Sean for these. Good job, yeah, bro. Definitely, definitely. Big ups. Big definitely ups. hard. So on these cases, what is your favorite in the cases? Out here? Yeah, out of the case. I might have to do each case. Um, each case, guys. These are dead stock 01 bread. Yeah, definitely love the bread one. That's crazy, but these are crazy too. 05 lasers. It's all like tie, tie between those two. Gotcha. Um, definitely these in this case. 06 Fireheads, brand new. I would have to go with the grapes. Yeah, those see, are mine right there. I like grapes better. But I'm a big, I'm a big like release like quality fan. So like th this 06 pair, yep. if these were 06 grapes, I'd say yes. Yup. But 2012 grapes versus 06 fire reds. Gotta go 06. Yeah, 06 yep. wins. Gotta go but the these 06. are cool too though. The Bel Air joints with the Nike Air. Oh yeah, definitely. These shits are hard. The Will Smith joints. Yup. I messed with those. I two. remember when, when those dropped actually. Everybody was going crazy. We got some more of the mochas. Yeah, Travis, the Travis's Jordan brand collaboration has been pretty heavy for us. These are sick. Yeah, I thought that when these came out, these were like one of the dopest ones that he had. I think so too, bro. The Air Forces are hard, but the, the Jays are crazy. More Concords. The Concords are the classic. Here we go. We talked a little bit about these. Tiff Diamonds. Oh, yeah. 220. The diamonds. Yeah, it's cool to see those back. Oh. I follow him too, so every time he posts, I'll be like, oh yeah, these is hard. They had a release, actually, I think, when he first released, he had to shut down the release because it was yeah, so crazy. The Nikki, yeah, yeah. The, the Canary pair yeah. got straight canceled at Complex. Straight canceled, I remember that. I think he was kind of looking forward to that happening, low key. I think he wanted his shit to be so crazy, but that's, it, yo, that's it, he got dope. what he, got mean, what he yeah. wanted. This is a pair. 04. Dead I like stock. those. Yep. Cool Gray 4s. 
Jordan Brand, I think these are supposed to come back sometime in 2019. That'd be dope. So hopefully they do a good job. I remember when those dropped, they were people going crazy yeah, for those that's, too. That's a pair right there. Um, the Supreme Forces. I like the low tops. The CDGs are sick. Oh I'm yeah, it works. I'm gonna have to go with these, but second, close second place. The CDGs are cold though. And then this one is a toss up. I, I gotta go with these. Yeah, I'll go with the OGs. Full 13s? Yeah, they're the OGs. A little hologram action. <clears throat> A little bit of specialness. Definitely would have to go to the OG. Yeah. Know. I was like, look, I was like, you know what? This case is a little weak. So we're, that's a, that's a unanimous. Definitely, that's no, <laughs> definitely go with that. Yeah, that. That's a unanimous. Um, I think honestly, like, I'm really stoked to have the amount of Concords we have. Like, you almost have a size run of Concords brand new, which is sick. 325 each. Word. Um, I'm trying to real hardcore and air right now on the paper shoes. Yeah. Which is going to be really yeah, you got. Let's go ahead and give these guys some ups too. Yeah, you gotta DC, get shout out. DC. Bring them back all the retro stuff. These are the links. Play my favorite skate shoe. You got sneakerheads. Just yeah, not one sneaker. You got exactly. everything. You exactly. feel me? That's a fact. Oh man. So we going to his favorite sneaker. There's so much good stuff in here right now. If we narrow it down to one. It's actually hard. It's hard. <laughs> Well, yeah, when you're a sneakerhead, it's always one. Okay. Bin okay. fives. You're going to fives. The Premio Bins, man. This is the uh, the 2117th pair of 2133 pairs. Mm. So there's only another 2,000 pairs of these on the earth. White laces, crazy soft leather. This is a pair right here. Those are really dope. Yeah, these are sick. And honestly, like... There are some shoes in here I would probably wear sooner than I would wear these, but for rarity and like just being able to hold this shoe, like I'll probably I wouldn't even wear them. I'll probably it's just a crazy get, them, shoe. get them in stock. Right, what's going on, everybody? It's Charles. It's Groove. We on the run. We got my man Austin here today, here representing are. round two. You Still already right know. Through and through. We in <laughs> round two, VA. So, for those of you who don't know what round two is, yeah, I'm gonna let my man Austin fill you in on what they do here, how long they've been here, all those type of things. Cool. Um, so round two is a buy sell trade store. Um, we started in Richmond, Virginia, five years ago in 2013, nearly six years ago now. Um, We've been fortunate enough to expand to cities like Los Angeles, New York, we got a spot in Miami. Um, we're trying to open up this year in Chicago. So basically, uh, yeah, like we, we try to like be the face of the buy sell trade scene. Um, we carry like hip streetwear brands like Supreme, Abating Ape, Palace. Uh, we'll even mess with like our, our, our homies Utmost, uh, their local shop. They do some cool stuff. We rock with those dudes yeah, too. I know Utmost, yeah, yeah. Um, right up the street, yo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right down the street. Yeah, yeah, Just, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, we got to yeah. put VA on, so. Yeah. yeah, those are the homies. Um, but basically, man, yeah, like, buy, sell, trade is, is the wave. Um, we get, like, crazy shit in from customers every single day. Uh, we have, like, a cool, like, relationship with a lot of those cats. We got a lot of good regulars. We bring, like, a good, uh, it's a good energy to the, to the streetwear culture. I think that's kind of needed. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. a lot of people are out here trying to make bread, and, you know, obviously that's the goal. But in the meantime, to make, like, positive relationships, meet people that have similar interests, like, all that stuff is a big goal for us also. Yeah, right, Relas right. relationships Relations, outlast yeah. the business. You know? That's it does, Relationships it does. make the business, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, it does. If you don't got homies, like, people out here fighting for you, whether it be in the store or outside in the streets, like, keeping the name up, bringing in cool products, like, we're not, you know, like, we need those people, so we appreciate right, everybody right. that rocks with us, yeah. for sure. I usually say to people, like, um, like, let's take money out the equation. Let's say the, the world didn't run on money. What well, yeah, would be yeah, your motivation yeah. to do all of that? Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, what are you doing a, it for? That's you know a fact. what I mean? That's like, a fact. Yeah, 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 yeah right. You gotta have the passion besides Absolutely. everything else. You feel me? Yeah, so, um, you guys used to be a, a website before, right? Like, round two? Yeah, we, we had an online store. Um, the online store was, was basically a way of selling anything that maybe had a little bit too much shelf life in the store, stuff that wasn't getting out of here quickly. Yeah, so, we used the online store to kind of like, give everything a second life and expand the market for specific items that may not have sold as well in the physical store, even yeah, though someone you. would want them, 
It's just in, in our in our small Richmond market at times certain things could be harder to get rid of. So we use the online store to like open up our means and just get more uh, more eyes and more people able to shop with us. Gotcha. So that was cool. Now before it was actually a storefront, was it just an online store? So the storefront was um, before the website. It actually outdates the website. However. Um, the three owners, like prior to having a storefront, did a lot of local sneaker events. They did sneaker cons. Anytime there was like a smaller, like uh, local sneaker event going on, they always had a table set up. So they uh, they did like a lot of footwork and just a lot of networking prior to opening the storefront. Gotcha. The storefront was originally um, like personal inventory from Sean, Luke, and Chris. Gotcha. Uh, Chris wears like a 12, 13. Sean wears like a nine and a half, ten and a half. Luke wears like an eight, eight and a half. Gotcha. So like between the three of them, they had a good range of like personal shoes to put into the shop to where like a lot That's of sizes were covered. Cool. They all wear different size clothing too, so like Chris and Luke here XL, Sean's like medium large. So like everything just from their closet was able to be like the original inventory in the, in the very, very first store gotcha, prior gotcha. to like getting buy, sell, trade started. And you know, like when you cash people out for stuff and you run buy, sell, trade, like if people are hip, it usually only takes, it can take like two hours to like get crazy shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. all they had to do was open the doors and let, you know, Richmond and let everybody come in with stuff. And it was all she wrote. That's after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. speaking of speaking of Sean, I didn't mean to cut nah, you. Good, but, uh, speaking of Sean though, like you gotta get that dude props. Yeah, that's man. the homie. Yeah, he designed his sneakers yeah, he's, now. He's, like, he's, very, he's uh, on the second one too, right? He's very creative, very motivated individual. Um, he makes it possible for us to like expand and never be complacent. I, I really try and like embody his attitude here, still in the shop, because you know without like what he did for us in Richmond, and you know the three of them obviously contribute in their own specific ways. But for yeah. me personally, like. Sean definitely provides a lot of inspiration. He's just constantly going, constantly motivated, never complacent, never like, never fully satisfied. He just always wants things to be better, or like as as good as they can be. So like working towards that is an everyday thing. So are you a, like a, a day one guy? Um, I I was a day one customer. I okay. shopped in here from like the very beginning, but I didn't That's get started cool. working here until it's been four years of the five. So like that first year, I was just kind of floating around, like spending money in here when I had the money to spend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah, showing yeah, my yeah. face, trying to you know establish the relationships like yeah. we we're talking about. Um, but yeah, so for the past four years, I've been fortunate to grow here throughout the company. And I started off just like picturing stuff on the IG, run around, making sure customers were good. And at this point, like me, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the managers. I have a co-manager um, and then we have assistant manager. Okay. Us three kind of hold it down. Gotcha. And I get everything done that needs to be done, like behind the scenes and in the store too. Gotcha. So, so you was here when he first released the Sean Lewis. Yeah, I was. How, how you feel? How I like bring oh, to the store? What's super, the energy? I was super proud of that fool, man. It's actually wild. Uh, I was invited to go out to California to be a part of the design process. Word. Um, That's fine. Yeah, I, I didn't. It sucks. I, I couldn't get some shifts covered, so I was unable to make it. But uh, at least, you know, it meant a lot to me to get the phone call and be like, dude, I'm making an Air Max. Like, you want to come out and be a part of the design conversation? Yeah, so yeah, I thought yeah. that was sick. Yeah. Um, Richie went, that our, our former coworker, he went out there and uh, he did his thing, helped out make the design. What's cool about that shoe is it was like 20 kids. Like, Sean, you know, obviously being the main opinion, but. There's a lot of influence and a lot of different opinions that went into making that shoe like Word. over like a meal basically. Like everybody sat down, they had the the, the artist from Nike was there, and then just a full collaboration of opinions of what people wanted to see kind of culminated in what the world was able to see and have in the in the released version of the S of the SW Air Max One. Right. Right. Yeah. I always wanted to know what their process was like. Yeah, it was, cool. it was it like, was a cool. Design. It was like twenty different homies of Sean's were all invited to be a part of the sketch, and they had a paid artist from Nike there, so that he was just like listening to what was being said. Um, I don't know if Sean was, I think Sean wanted the Air Max 197 off jump and then they just kind of like collaborated on the material choices, the color, everything like that. So. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, it was now cool, I see it was that cool, he's, cool he's actually making a new sneaker I saw, which yeah. was the yellow one with the corduroy that goes over the sneaker. Yeah. That was pretty the, dope too. The, the tearaways are yeah. wild. Yeah, the tearaways are wild. Um, in, in the last round two show, he had those shoes displayed, I think in South Beach. He said that they weren't going to be releasing. He said uh, they were just gonna be a one or two. Where, where, yeah, two. where? Yeah, one or two. And he's got the one yeah. pair cut up and then the one pair not cut up. Man, so I was checking those out. They're oh really God. cool, man. I, I unfortunately don't know if the if the world would get to experience those like Sean has. Damn. Yeah, yeah. I would hope so. But they cool. Yeah, they're cold <laughs> as fuck. I agree. So, I mean, I agree. if he asks you to come out there, that means you you're deep into collecting. Oh yeah, shoes are a big passion of mine, man. Yeah, yeah shoes like shoes are what got me started in in this whole like everything about working here was shoes, shoes, shoes. I had to learn about like a lot of shoe brands. I had to expand my knowledge on vintage. For yeah. me, like, it literally was like, and I, I went to Brown High School in the East End, so like, it is all retro J's. That's like all I care about. Like, when I first started working here, like, every colorway, every retro, like, anything that's clean that needed to have, like, a lot, a lot of my favorite shoes came out 06, like, Burgundy 5s, Word. Cool Gray 3s, um, 
Green Bean Fives, cool Carolina cool Fives. The cold. first grapes, the, the like first retro grapes from 06, I crazy. Like yeah, so like, yeah, a lot of that early 2000s, like, 02 to like 05, 07, like all that shit is really like near and dear and still is. See, I wouldn't say like me personally, I'm not really like a sneaker head. Mm -hmm. If I see a dope pair of sneakers, I'll get them. Yeah. But like around 05, that's when uh they had the Olympics, right? The uh -huh. Olympics yeah, 17 yeah. all that year. Mm -hmm. I'm a big savage guy, the Flints, the Pacific. Flints are crazy, yeah. ceramics are crazy, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. That's, that's what I was in, so I True. wouldn't call myself a sneaker head because I feel like that term is kind of. Just it's generic. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Right so like, most, I, I feel like most people that say they sneakerheads, they only buy Jordans, and it's like, yeah, nah, man. Like yeah. I need them Sacconis. So, uh -huh. I need the Diodoras. Nah, I need I anything that yeah. come out. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like sneakerhead. The term sneakerhead would more accurately apply to like someone like yourself that's like interested in shoes as a whole instead of just like hype driven stuff. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. Like for me, um, I got into shoes when Concord retro in 2011. I wasn't really brought up on shoes or like raised around being into sneakers, so yeah. like, it took like that crazy drop, like that hit the news for me to kind of like see um, that there's even this culture and that it existed. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So like I saw these patent leather Jordan 11s, and I'm a big sports fan, really big sports fan and basketball fan. So uh, when I found out that there's like all these sick ass sneakers that like were tied to these moments on the court that like the best athlete of any sport of all time um, was wearing when he made all these magical moments happen on the court. The sports nerd in me like needed these certain pairs of shoes, and it kind of like started off from that. And then um, just like being uh, being hip to sports and like what was popular with Jordans kind of just like led me to expand on my knowledge. And then once I got the job here, and it was no longer like a passion, it was like actually my job and like potentially a full career path. I like had to like soak up as much knowledge as I could. So you so you were actually like it was something behind the sneakers to you it wasn't just like a hype. I yeah, just no, see no, no. These sneakers. I, I, I like wanna... Jordan Eleven is my favorite shoe because. Tinker Hatfield literally like had no faith in the Air Jordan line and made that sneaker to revitalize everyone's perception of Air Jordan and the product because at the 10 Jordan retired and like there weren't there wasn't originally you know a plan for a second career for three more championships for all this further allure you know that wound up transpiring from Jordan coming back and, and being a three-peat champion one more time yep. you know what I mean so like when the 11 came out like Tinker's goal with that shoe um, was to literally bring people's attention back to the Air Jordan line because after the 10 people literally thought that would be the end of sequentially yep. numbered Jordans. You wouldn't see 11, 12, 13, 14. You're not gonna see no more. Yeah, and like, you know, the the, the, rap. the model as a whole, or the line as a whole, like really expanded and became as popular as it ever was after that shoe. And Jordan came back and won three more rings. So yeah, 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 yeah. All that shit is like, is definitely important and like was responsible for me getting into shoes. If it was just all like street trend and fashion, like I probably would have missed me or went over my head. It yeah. took like, yeah, it took that connection to something I already appreciated, which was sports. So and you yeah. had a passion for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just all kind of brought me here full circle, yeah. Yeah, so um, just to get away from that just a little bit, uh, it's a lot of people out here that are kind of, you know, starting up their own shops. Yeah. Um, what's some of the challenges like that, that you go through here and that you see on a day-to-day -day that they might not be aware of? You know, because... Everyone, like, everyone, everyone, like, is kind of selfish mm -hmm. when it comes to shoes and clothes, to be honest with you. Like... I don't want to throw shade, but like even some of my best, most like trusting customers will come in, like, and at the end of the day, they just want the most amount of money they could get out of me. Oh, yeah. Word, you know word, what I mean? Yeah, like, I get that. I get every that. day of the week, yeah, yeah. somebody that I trust lies to me and told me that they didn't wear a pair of shoes, or like, you know, like, oh, like, yeah, just try them on, or just, you know, like, people, like, it kind of sucks to think that people are so, like, about their own pockets and less interested in, like, negotiating and, like, building relationships and just being fair, like, you yeah, know, word, word. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. I, like, I like to do, I like to be really fair, so, like, a lot of times, like, I don't negotiate up on my buys because I start fair. So, like, if you want more than that, you're being unfair because I started where we should start. And, like, I'm not rude, you know what I mean? But, like, definitely it could be a challenge to negotiate with people, especially people that you think are your friends or, like, you value their friendship, you value their time that's spent in the store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're just coming at you like, oh, yeah, I never wore these. And you're like, yeah, you did. There's rocks right here. And they're like, oh, yeah, maybe maybe one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, bro, we're supposed to, like, we go out to dinner sometimes. The fuck are you, like, you trying to shit. get this 30 more dollars out of me talking about these are brands? So, yeah, just like, I don't know. I think, I think the biggest thing is, like, just like, yeah, it's wild, right? That shit um, wild as hell, yeah. Yeah, like, trust people, but, like, keep your friends close and your enemies closer, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Shit. It's like, so it's one of those things you can't mix business and pleasure. Like, you got to... Yeah, to an Keep extent. It to an extent, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's like just don't. For me, I'm a really fair negotiator, and I try to be honest and genuine with people. So I guess one thing I've had to learn is to not expect that from everybody. Word, word. Like you know what I mean? As, yeah. as trifling as that sounds, yeah. So like, are there like any ups and downs in the shop as far as like you know uh, 
sales go? Because you guys are one of the more established businesses out here. So it's like, Um, yeah, definitely. No, we we try to just move forward every day. Uh, One of the bigger things can be like if a shoe drops and there's like a lot of excitement around the drop. Yeah. Um, For me, if pairs are walking through the door and I'm excited to see them coming through the door, I'm going to buy them, buy them, buy them. So like pine greens. I thought pine greens were really going to hit hard. And, you know, it's my job to kind of have an opinion of how a a drop's going to work out on the resale market. You know what I mean? So, like, we were buying pine greens, buying pine greens, buying pine greens. We still have pairs of pine greens, you know, that I bought from, like, the original weekend. So, it's like judging hype and judging what's going to sell out well. And even, like, on StockX or wherever, you can see, like, there's a market for an item. But individually, like, where your store is located, you have to keep that market in mind because that's the market that you cater to. Yeah, so, like, keeping that, like... There can be some type of separation sometimes between like what you see going here, what you see going there. Like knowing like your own lane, your own market, like the market that surrounds you is more important than like monitoring all these random factoids and numbers offline. That stuff does influence price, but for the most part, like if you see it on an often enough basis, like you'll know like what someone's willing to pay for it. Yep. And just staying in track with that, like that's the big challenge because that shit changes every day. And then whatever comes out next week, that'll change whatever happened last week and so on and so forth. So, so, we're, so it's, it's constantly, constantly evolving. evolving. Yeah, it kind of can be really fickle. It though, can be. Girl. So far as like, because I know when the lobsters came out, mm-hmm. the lobster dunks, mm-hmm. um, low tops, when it came out, did you feel like it was too much hype behind? Did you feel like it was just a hype behind those? So I feel like um, for that shoe specifically, I'm excited to see certain Nike SVs going back up in price. Yeah. Because like, they're sick I shoes, I love the SVs, yeah, They're yeah, sick yeah. shoes. Like Nike really tells a story with a lot of those pairs, uh, a lot of the ones that are worth money, and it kind of makes sense to me why they should be worth money, and it makes less sense to me why they aren't. So. I, I like to see the Nike SB market kind of become revitalized. Yep. Yeah, I think it's cool. Um, I do think it's weird, though, that, like, it took kind of, like, the complex release of the Tiffany's to, like, get people interested in newer SBs again. Yep. I really think that had a big deal with it, like, the Canary, the Canary Tiffany's. I know what you're talking about, yep. Yeah, those, I think, really got people excited because those are still going for more than $2,000. Damn. You know what Actually, I, mean? so, I think uh, one of the highest uh, selling sneakers are Dunks. Yeah. Uh, to, to begin with, they are Dunks, no, you know what I'm saying? It's Nike, not a Jordan, it's not. It's a Dunk. The Nike SB yeah, market is, is popping. Yeah, the Nike SB market is popping, man. Like, what the Dunks, um, all the sneakers that compile that colorway, yep. like, yeah, there's there's some, got, there's some it, pairs of SBs. Man, there's a that lot that of really like cool limited have. drops of them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even yeah. though it's a, a wide release, it's still limited drops yeah, yeah, and yeah. limited pairs of Dunk, some of those sneakers. Dunks are cool too because like, uh, you know, there's there's a low top, there's a mid top, and a high top. Yep. So you know, Nike Same has the opportunity like, to utilize each of those cuts and make colorways according to each cut, and you can just do a lot with the Nike Dunk. And people, uh, for a long time, like the original idea with Dunks. Um, all the colorways, like I said, tell stories. Yep. So like, you get to just hold a pair of shoes that's like more than that pair of shoes. It's like, a, it's Jedi's or it's like a bison or it's like, yeah, 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 it's yeah. a band aid. Like you know, every, everything is something. It's with, something. With yep. Yeah, yeah. So it's cool.